activity. This section on cell activity covers animal and plant cells, movement in and out of cells, the cell nucleus, and cell division. First, let's compare animal and plant cells. All plant and animal life is composed of cells. They're the basic building blocks of life. The next clip looks at a variety of human and plant cells. All living things are made up of cells, countless millions of them, and there are many different kinds. For instance, there are skin cells, muscle cells, bone cells, blood cells, fat cells, nerve cells. Plants, too, are made up of many different types of cells. For instance, there's the guard cells around the stoma in a leaf the cells at the tips of growing roots, the cells in the stalk. But what are the key differences between animal and plant cells? The next clip explains. All animal cells are surrounded by a thin membrane. Inside the membrane is the cytoplasm, and in the cytoplasm are a number of distinct structures. Nearly all animal cells have a nucleus. Plants, too, are made up of complex cells with many different organelles. The functioning of these organelles is literally the basis of life on Earth. Plants use sunlight to make food in a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is not one simple reaction but a whole collection of complex, interdependent biochemical processes. Most of these reactions take place in an organelle unique to plant cells, chloroplasts. There are hundreds of other biochemical processes going on in cells, and they all seem to work together smoothly and efficiently. So there must be some system of control of the biochemistry. And that's where the nucleus comes in. For your exam, you need to know the features common to all cells and the difference between animal and plant cells. Set up two columns headed animal cells and plant cells and note down their similarities and differences as you watch the next section. Here's a diagram of an animal cell and a plant cell. Both cells have the same basic features. They both have a cell membrane, which is a very thin, partially permeable outer layer of proteins and fats. It holds the cell together and controls what goes in and out of it. Cytoplasm is the contents of the cell, where many of the chemical processes take place. The nucleus contains chromosomes, which carry genes on them, which act as a set of instructions for the cell. Plant cells have some extra features. They have a cell wall outside the cell membrane for support and strength, permanent vacuoles containing cell sap, which exert pressure on the cell wall to keep the cells firm and help the plant keep its shape, and chloroplasts, which contain chlorophyll for photosynthesis. If you need more time to complete your table, stop the tape and look back over this section. How did you get on? Your table should look like this. Animal and plant cells all have a cell membrane, cytoplasm and a nucleus. Plant cells also have cell walls, chloroplasts and permanent vacuoles. Don't confuse the cell membrane with the cell wall. All cells have a cell membrane. It holds the cell together 
and controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell. Only plant cells have a cell wall as well, to support and protect the cell. That's the end of the section on animal and plant cells. This section looks at the movement of substances in and out of cells. Diffusion and osmosis are two processes by which substances and fluids move in and out of cells through the cell membrane. Diffusion is the random movement of molecules of a substance. The net movement of molecules is from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules. During osmosis, water molecules move randomly across a partially permeable membrane. The net flow of water is from a weak solution to a strong solution. Remember, osmosis only applies to the movement of water molecules. But how does this work with cells? A large part of a cell and its surroundings is water, and molecules of water and dissolved substances pass in and out of the cell through the cell membrane all the time. The cell membrane is partially permeable. It allows some substances, shown in blue, to pass through, but not others, shown in red. Substances are transported across the cell membrane by diffusion, and water is transported across the cell membrane by osmosis. There's more about transport through the cell membrane in the higher tier program. There are many examples of diffusion and osmosis in the human body. For example, diffusion moves small molecules of digested food from the ileum, the small intestine, into the bloodstream. Diffusion also moves oxygen from the air sacs in the lungs to the capillaries and moves carbon dioxide from the capillaries to the air sacs. Osmosis absorbs water from undigested food in the large intestine. Osmosis also absorbs water into the root cells and root hair cells of plants and is involved in osmoregulation in the kidney. Here's a sample question about osmosis in plant cells. The diagram shows two cubes of potato, A and B. Cube A is in a concentrated sugar solution and cube B is in distilled water. The cells in the potato cubes naturally contain a dilute solution of cell sap. After one hour, which is likely to be true for cube A and cube B? Do they gain more water than they lose? Do they gain and lose equal amounts? Or do they lose more water than they gain? OK, this question is about what happens to the water in the potato. So it's about osmosis. And during osmosis, we know that water moves from a weaker solution to a stronger solution. Looking at potato A, the concentrated sugar solution in the beaker contains a lesser proportion of water than the dilute cell sap in the potato. So water will move from the sap into the sugar solution to try and balance things out. That means the potato cube A will lose more water than it gains. With potato B, the distilled water has a greater proportion of water than the dilute cell sap in the potato. So the water will move from the water into the sap to try and balance things out. This means that potato B will gain more water than it loses. That's the end of the section on the movement of material in and out of cells. This section is about the cell nucleus. What's inside the cell nucleus and what does it do? 
As you watch the next clips, note down what goes on in the nucleus. The basic building block for all life is the cell. The tools it needs to carry out its work are inside. These organelles vary depending on whether the cell forms part of a leaf in a plant, the skin of an animal, or the brain of a human being. But amazingly, virtually every cell contains the recipe for the entire body. The recipe is spelled out in a chemical code. Each line in the recipe is a gene describing a particular characteristic. The chemical code is in the cell's nucleus on long curled up molecules called chromosomes. Each cell contains a nucleus which holds 23 pairs of chromosomes. All the information which is needed to make a human being is contained within these. They're made up of two strands of DNA twisted into this spiral shape. And along these spiral strands are found the genes, our own personal genetic codes. You should have spotted that. The nucleus is the control centre that contains the genetic information for the cell on chromosomes. Chromosomes are long, thin threads made of DNA and proteins. And a gene is a piece of DNA with instructions to make a unique protein. All the cells in the body have an exact copy of all the genes and each individual inherits a unique combination of genes, unless they're identical twins. DNA in the nucleus is isolated from the rest of the cell contents and their reactions, so it's protected from the possibility of damage. Normally, the chromosomes in the nucleus are too thin to be seen, but they become visible when the cell is about to divide, when they shorten and thicken and appear as distinct threads. That's the end of the section about the cell nucleus. This section is about cell division. There are two kinds of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. First, mitosis. Mitosis is how all cells divide for growth or repair. The next clip explains what happens. This is mitosis, the natural process by which cells copy themselves to grow new tissue, seen through a microscope and speeded up 2,000 times. Look closer still at a single cell and it's clear mitosis is a very organized process. The action centers on the cell's nucleus where the DNA is stored as strands called chromosomes. The chromosomes curl up and tuck themselves away once their job is done. A lot goes on when a cell divides, so it's easier to watch mitosis in a computer simulation than trying to make sense of microscope images. Here are the chromosomes made from DNA. Before a cell divides, the chromosomes copy themselves, duplicating the DNA. Then, as the chromosomes move towards the middle of the nucleus, from the ends of the cell, strands of protein reach inward. The membrane around the nucleus breaks down, the chromosome pairs line up at the center, and the protein fibers attach to them. Suddenly the fibres contract and the chromosome pairs are split. Two exact copies of the original DNA line up at either end of the cell. Finally, the cell membrane splits and mitosis has created two identical cells from one original. The other kind of cell division is meiosis. Meiosis only occurs in cells which give rise to gametes the cells that take part in sexual reproduction. It all starts when an egg from the baby's mother fuses with sperm from its father. Both sperm and eggs are very special cells, 
because each holds just half the genetic recipe needed to make a person. Because they're special cells, sperm and eggs are made by a special process. It's called meiosis. First, the DNA is copied so that each chromosome becomes two chromatids. The double chromatids line up two by two, one pair from the mother and one pair from the father. Sometimes pieces of DNA cross over between them, making the new DNA unique. Then, rather like mitosis, protein fibers reach in from the ends of the cell as the membrane round the nucleus breaks down. The fibers pull the chromatid pairs apart and new membranes form around the two cells this creates. These two new cells each contain only half the genetic recipe for a whole person. Meiosis isn't complete until the new cells divide yet again. Once more, a fibre spindle forms to split the chromatids apart. In a man, they all develop into sperm. In a woman, one of them will become an egg. Meiosis only happens to make these special sex cells special because they hold just half the genetic recipe for a whole person. It's important to know the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Draw up two columns and have a go at jotting down the differences. If you want to, go back and have another look at the two clips. To start with, mitosis cell division happens to all cells, while meiosis only happens to sex cells. In mitosis, the cell divides once to create two new daughter cells, which are both exact replicas of the mother cell and have the same genetic information. In meiosis, the cell divides twice to create four new daughter cells, which are not exact replicas of the mother cell and have only half the genetic information. There's more about cell division in the Higher Tier programme. That's the end of the section on cell activity.